The next big update for Fallout 76, called Locked and Loaded, is almost upon us and there is a lot of ground to cover. Let us not waste any time and dive right into all the new features and changes which you can expect once this update launches on April 27. Special Loadouts is one of the biggest new features incorporated within Locked and Loaded and we could not be more excited to get it into your hands. It does exactly what you, the community, have been asking for, offering a way to modify and completely reset your character's special attributes. So, how does it work? Once your character reaches level 25, all you need to do is visit a punch card machine in-game, which will allow you to adjust your special, change your perk cards, and save your build into one of the two currently available loadout slots. The punch card machines then allow you to swap between your loadouts quickly and seamlessly, which you can also rename to easily tell them apart. These punch card machines will be located at train stations across Appalachia, but for even more ease of access, you will automatically learn the plan to build a punch card machine at your camp, Consequently, this means you can use punch card machines built at other players' camps as well. Speaking of camps, the next major feature to cover is camp slots. Yes, this is going to allow you to build, keep, and swap between multiple camps at once. Assuming you already have a camp built, when you open the map and expand the new camp slots menu in the upper left corner, you will be able to activate a second camp slot, allowing you to safely place down a new camp without destroying your first one. At this point, each of the two camps you have constructed are saved in their own slot and can be managed via the camp slots menu. This new menu contains options to rename your camp, turn your public map icon on or off, thereby making it either visible or invisible to other players respectively, and even change the icon of your camp. These options are also available to you when you select your active camp directly from the map. Remember that you can only have one camp active at a time, meaning that others are stored but still ready to be activated at your will by selecting your stored camp and then activate camp. By doing this, your inactive camp will be removed from the world and your newly activated camp will load in its place. Next up, we need to mention that Locked and Loaded is introducing changes to how vending machines and displays work in the game. Vending machines will now have the same shared inventory across all of your camps, meaning that you do not need to reassign the items you are selling every time you build a new camp or swap between a camp. Additionally, because vending machine item slots have become merged into a single pool, you can now sell the maximum number of items with just a single vending machine instead of multiple. Display cases, on the other hand, will not operate in the same way, such that you can still display different items at each of your camps. We have heard your feedback on shelters loud and clear too, and with the next update, both vending machines and display cases will be placeable inside of shelters. And one final point on vending machines. While powering on a vending machine will allow it to sell items to other players, Players, it no longer causes your camp to appear on the public map. As mentioned before, this functionality will now be controlled via the new public beacons feature, so be sure to turn on your public map icon in the new camp slots menu to attract other players to your camp. Daily Ops are getting expanded in this update as well, with a new decryption mode that puts you on a mission to disable radio interceptors for the Brotherhood's Vernon Dodge. Specifically, you will be tasked with hunting down three enemy code carriers, holding the codes capable of disabling the interceptors. These enemies will need to be taken down as part of three enemy waves, with each becoming increasingly harder, culminating in the final showdown with the Daily Op boss and the last radio interceptor. The decryption mode will also feature a new default mutation called Savage Strike, which makes enemy attacks more deadly by causing them to ignore your armor resistances. So be on guard and utilize sneak if you need to. Daily Ops in general are also getting new randomized mutations called Toxic Blood, where enemies leave behind poisonous hazards on death, Group Regeneration, where enemies emit an aura that heals other enemies in the area, and Swift Footed, where enemies have increased movement speed. Moreover, you will now encounter even more enemy types in all Daily Ops with the addition of Scorched, Mothman Cultists, and Mole Miners, and the locations of Vault 96, Watoga Raider Arena, and West Tech Research Center will be added to the pool of random locations as well. Finally, all of your efforts and daily ops will be rewarded with a range of new rewards, including the covert scout armor, new plans for camp objects, and both the unstoppable monster and medical malpractice legendary weapon plans. We have also moved several of the pre-existing rare rewards from daily ops into the uncommon drop list to make it a bit easier for you to score the new rewards. And if all of that was not enough, Locked and Loaded is bringing even more new content and changes to Fallout 76. Crafting sliders have been introduced into the game, which will allow you to craft items in bulk by using a slider to select how much of each item you would like to make. The World Activity menu has been updated to display nearby player vendors, public events, and active nuke zones, making them easier to find. 
Aiming with a controller is getting a boost too, with the new aim assist option helping your crosshairs snap to enemies and stay on target when aiming down a sight. Melee hit detection has also been improved, ensuring that the swings of your melee and unarmed weapons are registering more accurately. The Hunt for the Treasure Hunter events will also feature new rewards, giving you more reasons to track down those mole miners when they appear in Appalachia. And finally, this update marks the beginning of Season 4, Armor Race and the Power Patrol in Cold Steel, which brings a bunch of new rewards for you to work towards, including new items, skins, and even camp objects like mannequins, allowing you to display your cool outfits in the game. So, that finally marks the end of the video. I told you there was a lot to cover. We hope that you are excited for Locked and Loaded. Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, at Victorium.